We've all heard about the conspiracy theories on FEMA camps. And this video is about really exploring, is this hype or is there some substance to reality here? And so this is what we're going to explore. So when we think about this, you have to understand that there have been changes to Americans' personal freedoms, particularly in the last 15, 16 years. So on the one side of the equation, those who have the theory that we're being set up for eventual uh, mass arrests of U.S. citizens, there is some legitimacy to this, and we're going to explore this. So we're going to look a little bit more in depth into what is and what is not truth here. So we've seen quotes like this. The truth is, yes, the plans are here where you could, in the name of stopping terror or terrorism, invoke the military and arrest Americans and put them in detention camps. Congressman Harry Gonzalez, Democrat, Texas. So there is a lot to fully understand here. Now, we're going to take a look at a couple of documents that, if you're an American, affect you personally. The one that most Americans have no understanding about, and it's passed every year, is the National Defense Authorization Act. This document, folks, is one every American should read, because if you read it, you're going to understand some things that where those on the one side of the argument say that, well, there is ample proof, and then those who counter it and say, well, no, it's just merely a misunderstanding. I challenge both sides, have you actually read the bill? Because it appears that the ones who say that there is, in fact, in the law, provisions for mass arrest, they're actually correct. So you need to understand what executive orders are and how they interact with these laws that we're about to take a closer look at. There are some things you need to know, seriously. In this country, we have become, I don't know, so lackadaisical and so cavalier in seeing our rights continually to erode. All right, so I'm going to help you out here. First of all, you need to understand what bills are. They're important. Two. Do what most Americans never do. Actually read them, folks. Number three, words are important. You have no idea how one word can change everything to a paragraph, a sentence. Four, language bills are written in legalese. You need to understand that. Uh, it's a different language. Yes, it uses English, but it is a different language. There are three particular pieces of legislation that you should be aware of. Number one, the Stafford Act. Two, House Resolution 390. And again, the National Defense Authorization Act. This is, as you see, House Resolution 390, uh, this particular bill was to direct the Secretary of Homeland Security to establishment of a national emergency centers on military installations. Now, one of the things that we have a whole lot of here in the United States are, in fact, um, abandoned military installations. And as you read this bill, it basically lays out um, how the Secretary of Homeland Security will actually invoke these um, temporary facilities. Now, in here in this bill, it says to provide temporary housing, medical, and humanitarian assistance to individuals and families 
dislocated to an emergency or major disaster. Now, I said previously that words are very important, and they are, because you have to understand the definition of what words are. So, in every bill, they do give you what the definition is to a particular word. And in this case, emergency is very, very broadly defined. And you need to understand that, that when we understand the term emergency has the meaning given such term in Section 102 of the Robert T. Stanford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistant Act. Well, if you did not go back and take a look at that, you would have not a clue to what the term emergency is. And it doesn't matter what you may think in your own understanding what an emergency is. You have to understand this is written in legalese. Uh, again, and the word major disaster. Uh, again, they refer you back to this section 102. Well, it just so happens that I have both of these pulled up here. So let's read this. Now, in this act, because this word applies to all bills, amendments, uh, executive orders, new policies. So when you get this word, understand, translate, and meditate on it, right? Emergency means any occasion or instance for which in the determination of the president, right, federal assistance is needed to supplement state and local efforts and capabilities to save lives and to protect property and public health and safety or to lessen or avert the threat of catastrophe in any part of the United States. Now, each one of those words I just read have more meanings. Let's get to major disaster. It means any natural catastrophe, including any hurricane, tornado, storm, high water, wind-driven water, tidal wave, tsunami, earthquake, volcanic eruption, landslide, mudslide, snowstorm, or drought, or regardless of cause, any fire, flood, or explosion in any part of the United States which is determined of the president causes damage to sufficient severity and magnitude to warrant major disaster assistance under this act to supplement the efforts and available resources of state, local governments, and disaster relief organizations in alleviating the damage, loss, hardship, or suffering caused thereby. So, taking that now, when you begin to see later in this presentation, the word emergency, understand it is very, very broadly defined. Now, this is the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2017. It is 1,587 pages long. It's designed that way. And in this document, there are some, how shall we say, troubling language. In the first part, as you read this bill, and it is a long one, folks. It's detailed. Uh, they have a new one that will be coming out. But this bill covers this year. And it's very important that you begin to look at all these sections because buried in here and it would take me a couple of hours literally to go through this and point these out to you I'm not going to do that you can do your own homework i'm making the program enough to give you a good overview to understand that this is not just made up it's not high privily and it's not conspiracy in this document, there is internment camps, civilian inmate labor program, domestic terrorism, how that is defined, Executive Order 13603, the National Defense Preparation, the Department of Defense Training Manual for local, are you ready for this? 
uh, appointed leaders. Then in there as well as the Agenda 2030, we have in there as well the Military Police Handbook to give to local citizens. Uh-huh. And we also have Agenda 21. So as you can see, I'll leave the link to where you can really look at this, and you really should. It's, like I said, long. It's detailed. You know, I may be one of the few people that actually read the Affordable Care Act. Maybe even fewer when I read the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform Act. And what I found within those pages was I, I would go and try to tell people. They would not listen to me. I said it's the systematic takeover of the two largest parts of our economy. Number one, health care, right? And then financial, and that is where they got us. And it's something today that you will not find Congress senators even talking about it. So as you can see, this document is lengthy. Um, check it out. It's well worth the read, all right? So as you can see, this is about as real as it gets. Now, on top of the legislation, and this, by the way, I didn't even get into the Patriot Act. Uh, that is another document that should be included on here. But understand the role now of the executive branch and how over the decades, through multiple administrations, both Democrat and Republican, that the office of the president has risen higher in the authority that initially the founding fathers gave it. So understand what these executive orders are. Now we're gonna go through these folks and you're gonna see this. Let's start out with executive order 10990, allows the government to take over all modes of transportation, control of highways and seaports. And I'll just continue to read these. Allows the government to seize control of communication media. Allows the government to take over all electrical power, gas, petroleum, fuels, uh, fuels, and minerals. Allows the government to seize all means of transportation, including personal cars, trucks, or vehicles of any kind, and total control over all highways, seaports, and waterways. Executive Order 10999. Allows the government to take over all food resources and farms. Uh, allows the government to mobilize citizens, civilians, into work brigades under government supervision. Remember that Authorization Act back there, folks? Yeah. Allows the government to take over all, over all health, education, and welfare functions. Executive Order 11002 designates the Postmaster General to operate a national registration of all persons. Executive Order 11. 003 allows the government to take over all airports, aircraft, including commercial aircraft. Uh, executive Order 11, 11, 11, 11, 004 allows the Housing and Finance Authority to relocate communities, build new housing with public funds, designate areas to be abandoned, and establish new locations for populations. How would you like to be a part of that? It goes on. Now, I'm not going to read the exact <coughs> each executive order. You can see this. Allows the government to take over railroads, inland waterways, public storage facilities, specifies the responsibilities of the Office of Emergency Planning, and gives authorization to put all executive orders into effect in times of increased international tensions and economic or financial crisis. Now, folks, you've got to realize these words are important. Grants authority to the Department of Justice to enforce the plan set out in executive orders, to institute industrial support, to establish judicial and legislative liaisons, to control all aliens, to operate penal and correctional institutions, and to advise and assist the president. Assigns emergency preparedness function to federal departments and agency, consolidating 21 operative uh, executive orders issued over a 15-year period of time. Executive Order 11921 allows the Federal Emergency Preparedness Agency to develop plans to establish control over the mechanisms of production and distribution of energy sources, wages, salary, credit, and flow of money in U.S. financial institutions in any undefined national emergency. Undefined national emergency, folks. It also provides that when a state of emergency is declared by the president, Congress cannot review the action for six months. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, has broad powers in every aspect of the nation. 
General Frank Cialazold, Chief of FEMA Civil Security Division, stated in 1983 conference that he saw FEMA's role as a new frontier in the protection of individual and governmental leaders from assassination and of civil and military installations from sabotage and or attack, as well as prevention of dissident groups from gaining access to U.S. opinion or global audience in times of crisis. FEMA's powers were consolidated by President Carter and incorporated. Folks, it's serious. Now, my question to you is, what region of FEMA are you in? It's important. It's going to be a time where that may become very important. And to let you know that there are 12 regions, and here they are. And you can see the operating points that are designated by the gold dots. And folks, they're everywhere. Take a look, you can see. And to bring this out, now we all think of FEMA of times of disaster. That when there is a national disaster, a terrorist attack, FEMA is on the scene. And so we have this dual view at this agency. One, the broad powers it has is scary, but two, the fact that it has resources to help you and I in the event of an emergency. So when they want to force us into FEMA camps, what are they going to do? Well, we've begun to see this already play out in this country. Hello, the elections. And then there's this. Yeah, more real than you think. And I'm going to show you why. Remember the term, what an emergency is. Now, we've taken the proactive steps that we've actually got cartoon books ready to go and to give to the new detainees. That's the only thing you can say. And by the way, we can thank the Senator John McCain for doing the forward on this. Kind of tells you something, doesn't it? So these are the new FEMA camps, but it gets even more interesting. So when you talk about the ability of the president and his broad range of powers that we've now divided the United States up into 12 quadrants, that you understand where FEMA comes in and its roles that it plays, I thought the next thing would might be interesting is to understand how these can be triggered in the event of a disease outbreak. Boom. President declares an emergency. FEMA takes over. In the event of an explosion, in the event of a restriction of certain rights, this is what begins to trigger this. And the amount of installations of basically housing large groups of people are becoming more and more abundant. And when you begin to think about how in the event of, let's say, an outbreak of a disease, where it is now mandatory that all citizens take vaccinations or you end up in what they would call a retraining camp. And listen, the United States is very well versed at this. We have, listen, we have done this time and time in the past. And you don't think so? Well, ask our Japanese friends. Their parents, their grandparents, great-grandparents were probably caught up in this. It's been done before. And it's going to be done again. We know how the system works. We know how it can be done. Yeah, take a good look, folks. You don't think that this could happen in the United States. But you would be very wrong. It's happened before. It's going to happen again. One of the things that Katrina taught 
our government was that we discovered something that they had missed. And that is they discovered large human controlled containment zones in stadiums. Yes. And it was after Katrina that new policies, new directives were put in. And, and don't think that this was a system failure. No, folks, this was an exercise. It was handed to the authorities to be on a silver platter. And they took great amount of interest and in learning from this. You know, the now deceased Honorable Supreme Court Justice Antonio Scalia said it best. He says, are you kidding yourself if you think the same thing will not happen here again? Talking about FEMA roundups. The ruling was wrong, but I would not be surprised to see it happen again. In time of war, it is no justification, right? But it is a reality. So these camps can easily be set up very quickly. And as you can see, it does not take that much problem of putting it up. And by the way, I just want to lay this out for you so that you understand how the military police support the resettlement and operations. It says that these operations may be performed as domestic civil support operations. Now, when you begin to see how the military and local law enforcement begin to work in one of these scenarios, you can see where there could be an opportunity for a real breakdown of command and control. That's why we have spent the last two decades basically militarizing, federalizing, let me just say it more correctly, local law enforcement. And as we've begun to see now, the Homeland Security is now the probably the number one uh, law enforcement um, agency in these events that has total control, total power. And as I've told you, that's why you see more and more of your local, state, and local police being federalized in exactly in this scenario. We've seen these in exercises in the last couple of years where we see familiar stores now becoming bases for military training exercises. We know this is that they've now outfitted these particular crafts um, to be able to detain people. You think I'm kidding? No. The military is very good at this. This is what they do best. And these Chinooks and the Blackhawks, as you can see, have been designed to transport detainees. We now know FEMA has ordered train cars. Train cars, folks, that are designed to hold humans. This is not make-believe. We've all seen the movement of large military assets. Lots of speculation going overseas, or are they being deployed? There have been leaked documents that certainly show how the military is designing, trained, and fully prepared to begin to implement inter camps, internment camps. It can happen in a second. So I want you to understand that there are a couple of things that have continued to take place in the event that martial law is needed. So where are these camps? I'm going to show you very quickly. Find your state. I'll leave a link to these where you can see these. And by the way, these are by no way uh, up to date. They're putting in more and more. But I just thought some of you might like to see this. Yes, in every state, and even the ones where they could not find facilities, <laughs> it's because they're getting better at masking them. And then in some cases, they really don't care. And it's not just the United States, folks. Looks like our friends up in Canada have a little plan just in the event if people start coming over the border. You see, 
this has been planned for years. It's not conspiracy. Now, it can be viewed in two different points of view. One, national defense. Or, if someone got crazy in there and decided to become much more dictatorial, could be used against us. And the thing that we have begun to find out is that many of the buildings that due to failed real estate deals, changing demographics, social, uh, et cetera, that we found a whole new place. And by the way, as you begin to see more and more of this situation, understand its conditioning. Our government has massive, massive assets at their disposal. And it doesn't take that long for one to begin to take the idea that you could become this. I mean, I think this church sign says it best. Beware of the FEMA death camps. The Jews thought it wouldn't happen. History is replete with showing that it has happened and it will happen again. When you begin to round up ordinary citizens due to a religious or political view that differs from the ruling class, and it can happen here, folks. We have begun to see news stations around the world, the country, excuse me, that have begun to locate this. These news reporters that have been brought out and said, you know, it's an interesting thing about strip malls and how you can begin to take stadiums. And how as we view prisons in the more institutional sense, understanding the very shopping malls can be easily converted. Easily. And you don't think the planners have not figured this out? Oh yeah, one thing about prisons, it has been one of the most robust industries in the last decade. So the next time you go shopping, ask yourself, why all the tariffs? Seriously. All across the country, they have the same uniform design. Conspiracy theory? Who knows? We know this. Many of these internment facilities are off the grid. Huh. And oh, by the way, we talked about the surplus military bases. Well, when I mention House Resolute House Bill 390, there you go. And we're seeing more and more activity. This is what a prison used to look like. This is what they're going to look like in the future. Yes, it's here. The possibility is very real and understand the system is already in place. The infrastructure is set. And it will only take a vital, how should we say, miscalculation for something to get out of hand. We've seen it before. We're going to see it again. You know, whether or not the Georgia Stones are in fact something of the New World Order or not, it's the fact that they simply keep on putting out here. 500 million on the planet? Now here's the disturbing part as I end this presentation. They have, they have already made the preparations, folks. Now, I have a little bit of a personal connection to this, and I can tell you these are real. They have been manufacturing them by the millions. In the industry, they call it the rack, stack, burn them, and bury them. Because you can literally put more than just one body in this. With children, you can put up to six. With an adults, you could actually put in three. We've been testing out on-site incinerators. Yeah, think about that. So no matter how you look at this, this is a fact. 
These are now staged. And when we look at someone like North Korea, and we point out how they have done this, don't think that it can't happen over here as well. We are not immune. Think about it. But the sheeple, they're going to disbelieve this. They're going to say that it's no way. But now that you know, you can't say you don't know about it any longer. My question to you is this. Are you going to wake up? It may be too late. Folks, this was just my point of view. Here are the references. You can check them out for yourself. But I encourage you to read these bills, to learn them, and now start seeing it through different eyes. You take care of one another and be kind.